Thank you, Maury. Uh, I'm excited to be here to tell you about uh, Innovio, our platform, our programs, and our, and our pipeline. We, uh, you know, we are, Innovio is taking immunotherapy to the next level. And as we like to say at, at Innovio, it's all about the T cells, or more specifically, the right kinds of T cells. We are uh, publicly listed. We are uh, listed on, uh, on the NASDAQ. And uh, as such, you know, I'd encourage you, we've been to look up our periodic filings, uh, as well as other disclosure statements for more information on the company. So uh, we've established a very powerful DNA-based immunotherapy and vaccine platform. Uh, it's a synthetic DNA-based uh, approach. Uh, we combine it with in vivo electroporation. And so in a, in a sense, we are developing combination products which have a biologic and a medical device associated with it, which provides us with, uh, uh, with multiple uh, avenues for, of patent protection and extending uh, product life cycles. The other uh, thing that sets Inovio apart, aspect that sets Inovio apart, is our ability to, to develop multi-antigen combination products to target multiple different facets of the same tumor or multiple different tumors using our uh, multi-antigen approach. We've uh, very recently, just about 10 days ago, uh, published our phase two, pivotal phase two uh, efficacy data in the Lancet where we showed for the first time that you can develop uh, antigen-specific CD8 T cells through, vac through a vaccination approach, which can then lead to efficacy at distal, uh, distal sites of lesions. And I'll, I'll share with you some of the data in a little bit. Uh, 2015, in the last two years, we've also established two major big pharma partnerships, uh, totaling over, with potential milestone payments, o totaling over a billion dollars. But what really gets us excited about the validation of our platform is also the amount of non dilutive funding that we have raised, over $130 million in, in the last uh, seven years, of which uh, about 70 plus came in the last 12 months. Again, under scoring the potential of the platform and our ability to rapidly develop products that target both uh, infectious diseases as well as oncology targets. Uh, the core technology I mentioned is, is synthetic uh, or highly optimized synthetic DNA plasmids. Uh, and what we have done here is we have, uh, th this is called the Syncon approach, where uh, these are highly optimized antigens or, uh, and a highly optimized DNA plasmid backbone, where by simply changing the, the backbone and sequences and changing the transgene inserts, we can modulate the types of immune responses that are, that are desired. So if you're looking at an immuno active immunotherapy approach, we can insert antigens of interest, so be, the, uh, be they uh, tumor associated antigens or tumor required antigens or even new antigens uh, we can we can implant those into our DNA plasmids to drive antigen specific immune responses in the area of gene therapy we can use a, a similar approach of optimized DNA plasmids to look for delivery of monoclonal antibodies uh, on the one hand or even therapeutic proteins on the other so these are in vivo expression uh, driven off of our highly optimized plasmids and then on, and on the other end of the spectrum we can also to modulate immune responses to, to look at, uh, you know, downregulate in, in, in these cases uh, to look at inflammation. Uh, so to give you a sense of uh, the power of the data coming out in our uh, study, let me share with you our uh, results from our phase two study. So this was a placebo-controlled, randomized, double-blind study where we, where we uh, enrolled over 140 women who had high-grade cervical lesions, which were HPV 16 or 18 associated. These women, uh, the only option available to them is, is surgery or, or through a procedure called LEAP, where essentially the gynecologist enters the cervix and then ablates, the surgically excises the, the lesions. So our approach is to see if we could use a vaccine-derived uh, uh, immune responses to clear lesions in the periphery. So what's shown here are, are the antigen-specific T cells that uh, our vaccine was able to induce in these women over a three-dose regimen. Uh, these women were treated at weeks 0, 4, and 12, and, and the green line shows you the increased antigen-specific T cells produced in the vaccinated women relative to the placebo controls. Uh, I, I don't have the data today. You can uh, refer to, the, to our Lancet paper, but we've further characterized these T cells, and I mentioned we need to, to drive the right kinds of T cells. 
In this case, we have shown that these T cells are CD8 T cells, and in particular, they also have uh, lytic activity, so they are CTLs. So what about efficacy in this cohort? So what we found was uh, that in the vaccinated group, uh, over four, so first of all, I should say that we met both our primary endpoint and our secondary endpoint. Our primary endpoint was a regression of lesions uh, to SIN1 or, or normal. So everyone started out with high-grade lesions, SIN2 or SIN3, and at week 36, we asked the question whether these lesions had regressed. So we met our primary endpoint. Our secondary endpoint was even more stringent, where we asked the question, not only are these women regressing, but are they also clearing the HPV at 16 or 18, which is the underlying cause of infection? Because if you just go through surgical ablation of the tissue, but you don't get rid of the HPV, there is a recurrence rate associated, and, and over time, uh, essentially, uh, the, the, you know, some, some women end up losing the entire cervix. So it is a significant uh, issue. And, and so what I show you here is our secondary endpoint where we found that uh, 40 percent, over 40 percent of the women, vaccinated women, not only cleared their lesions, but also cleared the HPV, underlying cause of HPV, uh, compared to about 14 percent in the placebo. So this was very dramatic. Uh, but how do we really connect the presence of CD8 T cells with, uh, with lesions? And so here we looked at tissue uh, to see if we can see some signatures of uh, CD8 T cells being in, at the site of the lesions. So here you'll see two panels, uh, the left, uh, the top and bottom shows HPV staining. So the brown is, uh, is staining for P16, which is a marker for HPV replication. So this is a patient who started out at SIN3. Uh, top left panel, you see a lot of brown. The epithelium is full of uh, HPV replicating. Uh, 36 weeks later, the bottom left panel, you see the HPV is gone. There's clear new epithelial tissue in, in, this, in this patient. On the right, uh, what you see is staining now for CD8 T cells. So these are not just T cell markers or lymphocytic markers, but, but a marker for CD8 T cells. At entry, week zero, you see a few brown spots on the right top panel suggesting that there is, the body is able to mount some immune responses. There is some CD8 T cells, but look at the dramatic increase on the lower right panel of CD8 infiltrates into the tissue at week 36. So this gave us a great uh, cause for uh, encouragement in, in, in demonstrating and finally being able to demonstrate that we are uh, producing or inducing antigen-specific CD8 T cells through, uh, through a vaccination approach. These are able to traffic. We can measure them in the bloodstream. They are able to traffic to uh, a distal lesion, clear the lesion, and also clear the virus associated with it. Uh, we are looking to develop this into uh, the first, uh, potentially as the first non-surgical alternative uh, for treating cervical dysplasia. Uh, we are our phase three planning. We uh, we are is, is in full swing. We are looking forward to initiating our phase three study next year. Uh, we need to uh, uh, complete our end of phase two meeting with the FDA, and we also need to complete our phase uh, phase three uh, manufacturing of the clinical product. But it's data like this that that led to um, a major deal with Metamune and AstraZeneca, where they took this program and uh, focused it, uh, took out cervical cancer and head and neck cancer program, uh, and we've now partnered that with Metamune for further development. Uh, so beyond the broad, uh, beyond the HPV specific excitement, the, the additional, the data also provides a broad proof of principle that we can, that if you generate the right kinds of T cells, uh, and th they are going to traffic to where they need to, to provide uh, a clear medical benefit. We've, we've also now, through our multiple different programs, shown a very favorable safety profile for, uh, for DNA and in vivo electroporation. Over 600 patients have now been vaccinated. Over 1,500 different uh, uh, vaccinations have been, uh, have been performed, uh, and the safety profile uh, is, is very unremarkable. Uh, so how does this factor into, our, into immuno-oncology? So I think what's increasingly becoming uh, clear is that the checkpoint inhibitors, as remarkable as they've been, in, and, and uh, in many cases have performed mir miracles in uh, increasing uh, overall survival or curing uh, previously uh, unthought of uh, cancers. Uh, but what's also clear is that for the, t uh, for the checkpoint molecules to work, you really need to have T cells present. And, you know, a minority of tum tumors have T cells present, and even in those cases, the uh, efficacy rates coming out of these studies uh, tend to be in the 20 
20 to 40 percent response rates. So uh, a T cell generating platform uh, we feel is, is, is ideally positioned to take advantage of the, uh, of the checkpoint molecules and develop highly effective combination therapies. So our uh, immuno-oncology clinical and commercial, commercialization strategy has really three pillars to it. Uh, the first is to develop multi-antigen monotherapies where we're looking at, uh, you know, similar to our HPV program, we're looking at other, ca other cancer-associated antigens or cancer tumor-required antigens, and through our Syncon technology, develop highly optimized uh, uh, products that can drive T cells against these tumors. We are also... Uh, interested in partnering with uh, big pharma uh, partnerships or other commercial partners to now combine the antigen-specific approach with, uh, with the checkpoint inhibition molecules. And uh, the Metamune deal provides one, one example where uh, pharma has validated our, our approach here. Uh, and then the third, which I don't have time to get into, but we are very excited about, is uh, the use of this DNA platform to now drive, uh, to express these checkpoint molecules, uh, encode the checkpoint molecules within these plasmids, and essentially combine the antigen-specific approach in combination with the checkpoint molecules and deliver both together as, as a DNA-based immunotherapy. And we've, we've published uh, a couple of challenge models in animals where we have shown that the, what we call DMAPs, DNA-encoded monoclonal antibodies, are able to drive the, the cognate monoclonals in animal models and clear uh, and, and protect these uh, models from either tumor progression or from from uh, disease challenge, as the case may be. Uh, I mentioned two, uh, two partnerships in the last uh, two years. Uh, the first was, is with Roche, where we are developing a hepatitis B immunotherapy. Uh, this was a 10 million upfront and over 400 million in milestone payments. Uh, double-digit royalties. The more recent uh, deal was with AstraZeneca, Metamune, where in addition to the 3112 program for cervical cancer and head and neck cancer or HPV-associated cancers, we're also partnering with Metamune to develop two additional uh, oncology-focused antigen-based, uh, multi-antigen-based products. So that's another uh, significant deal for Inovio. Uh, we have a, a fairly broad pipeline in both oncology as well as infectious diseases, uh, shown on the top in addition to our uh, HPV-associated disease uh, programs. Uh, we've also got clinical studies ongoing in, in, um, in aerodigestive cancers. These are HPV-6-based uh, 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 cancers which have no, uh, no current uh, uh, alternatives other than surgery. Uh, we have a program ongoing in breast, lung, and pancreatic cancer. This is based on uh, the use of HSTERT as, as our uh, cancer antigen. And then we also have a prostate cancer program that's in the clinic, uh, which is a combination of PSA and PSMA. On the ID side, uh, in addition to the Roche collaboration for hepatitis B, we have a therapeutic hep C vaccine in development, and then uh, HIV, Ebola, and MERS. Uh, uh, these, these are externally funded programs through our co uh, collaborative grants from, from the NIH and, and DARPA. Uh, financially, we have, we have a very, uh, uh, we are well positioned. Uh, over 150 million as of end of June. Since then, we have now added the uh, upfront payments from um, uh, based on our Metamune deal. Over 27 million added to that. But but most importantly, and something that we are very proud of, uh, it's a clean balance sheet with with uh, zero debt on it. So to end, I would uh, just like to uh, summarize again by saying that. We are focused on uh, driving, using antigen-specific approaches to drive the induction of, of functional uh, T cells, which we are then applying to uh, treat, uh, both prevent and treat, uh, important medical indications in oncology as well as, as, well as in infectious diseases. We've now shown that we've, uh, we can develop best-in-class T cells. Uh, we, are, we are looking at mono and combination therapies in, in combination with uh, checkpoint molecules. Uh, our lead program is entering phase three in the next, uh, in 2016. And then uh, we've also established validating partnerships, not only with Big Pharma, but also other uh, major uh, funders uh, for product development activities. And thank you.